the insane sex life of Neanderthals. One of the biggest questions surrounding human evolution is still about Neanderthals. They are the closest cousins of humans, yet we don't understand their habits, particularly what their sexual habits were. How did they deal with human primal needs? We shall discover more about our hominid cousins and their insane desires in this video today. As there is little evidence to indicate what Neanderthal sex would have been like, there is still a great deal that we do not know, including the enigma surrounding Neanderthal mating patterns. Thankfully, recent developments in genetic paleontology are shedding light on this enigmatic topic, and our understanding of prehistoric human mating customs is growing. It was difficult to navigate a mating situation that included several different hominid species in prehistoric times. Scientists have discovered evidence that suggests humans and Neanderthals were probably interbred, and we are still suffering the consequences of that interbreeding today. There's mounting evidence that early modern humans had frequent sex with Neanderthals, telltale clues indicating it occurred on numerous occasions and over a vast geographic area are hidden in the genomes of modern populations. Importantly, even though you could believe that the naughty specifics of these ancient liaisons have been lost to prehistory, there are still hints as to what they might have looked like in the present. Everything you ever wanted to know about this exciting period in human history is discussed here. Human penises are unique in that they are smooth in one way. Common and bonobo chimpanzees, who make up our closest living cousins and with whom humans share 99% of our DNA, have penile spines. Neanderthals. Who were they? The most distant ancestors of modern humans. Although they were human like us, Neanderthals belonged to a separate species known as Homo neanderthalensis. Neanderthals are our closest extinct human ancestors, along with a group of humans from Asia known as Denisovans. Scientific data indicates that our two species originated from a single ancestor. Current research reveals that the Neanderthal and modern human lineages split at least a half a million years ago, according to both fossil and DNA data. Their divergence, according to genetic calibrations, occurred roughly 650,000 years ago. Early modern humans coexisted with Neanderthals for at least some of their existence. Since some of us have inherited as much as 2% of Neanderthal DNA, we now know that certain interactions were extremely intimate. Is it true humans shared a bed with Neanderthals? Even though Neanderthals and modern humans are two entirely distinct species, mating between the two nevertheless occurred. DNA testing has proven beyond a doubt that humans and Neanderthals had sexual contact. A 40,000-year-old individual whose remains were subjected to DNA examination revealed that 11% of his genome was indeed Neanderthal rather than human. The amount of Neanderthal DNA present is the greatest ever discovered in a human. Even now, some individuals carry Neanderthal genetic traces. Were the Neanderthals responsible for the transmission of dangerous genes that affect human genitalia? It turns out that Neanderthals transmitted some genes that can result in the development of genital ulcers in humans. Besset's disease, which includes several side effects such as ulcers on the mouth and genitalia, inflammation, and blindness, is more likely to occur in those who carry the Neanderthal gene HLA-B star 51. Besset's disease is not the only illness influenced by Neanderthal DNA. Diabetes, lupus, and Crohn's disease are all those conditions. Did the Neanderthal society also practice inbreeding and incest? One of the most significant contrasts between modern humans and Neanderthals is our viewpoint on connections with close relatives. An examination of a female Neanderthal toe bone found in a Siberian cave revealed that the Neanderthal's parents were her close cousins. The parents were probably half-siblings, either an aunt or her nephew, or the other way around. Scientists established that the level of inbreeding in this particular specimen was abnormally high for any species, indicating that this was not an isolated incident. Neanderthals and humans mated for tens of thousands of years. There were numerous instances of human and Neanderthal hybridization. It appears that this interspecies romance has been going on for at least 100,000 years, according to diverse DNA data. For an estimated 60,000 years, the two species interbred, creating fertile offspring whose genetic lineage is still present today. Throughout this era, it's thought that thousands of these couplings took place. 
This discovery transformed how we understand our past and demonstrated that Homo sapiens must have left Africa sooner than previously believed. Neanderthals never inhabited Africa. Hence, the existence of Neanderthal admixture provides strong evidence that humans migrated to Eurasia at least 100,000 years ago. Yes, there was cave sex between Neanderthals and humans, but did they kiss? Has a Cro-Mag been used? It is commonly known that Neanderthals and early humans interbred. The delectable details of these interspecies encounters, including kissing, philandering, and even the transmission of STDs, were just disclosed this week by researchers. The Early History of Kissing According to anthropologist Laura Weyrick of Pennsylvania State University, when you kiss someone, oral microorganisms will move back and forth between your mouths. In light of the discovery of a human bacterial signature on a Neanderthal tooth found in northwest Spain in 2017, the researcher hypothesized that these prehistoric peoples exchanged saliva. Were the Neanderthal genitals the same size as our own? Male Neanderthals were found to have members that were comparable in size to our own. The human male genitalia is proportionally larger than those of many other primates, which have smaller members. Scientists have concluded that Neanderthal penises were probably indistinguishable from our own by analyzing our DNA. This supports the idea that our genitalia was compatible with theirs and makes sense given the degree of inbreeding between the two species. Is it possible that Neanderthals sexed themselves to extinction? Paleontologists have been attempting to determine what happened to the Neanderthals for many years, but have failed. Some theories attribute the extinction of our closest relatives to climate change, while others attribute it to human invasions. Another theory is that the Neanderthals may have simply merged with us rather than going extinct. They might have mated with another species and made themselves extinct. Were the interspecies relations always mutually agreeable? Interspecies rape was most likely a common occurrence in prehistoric times, and is most likely that human and Neanderthal sexual connections were not voluntary. It's improbable that the two hominids connected voluntarily, because communication between the two species would have been challenging. If this were the case, it might be proof that humans and Neanderthals had a violent relationship that led to humans being the only ones left alive. It's acceptable to start understanding Neanderthal sexual behavior now that we have a better understanding of their way of life thanks to developments in the analysis of the fossil and archaeological records together with a greater willingness to embrace complex Neanderthal cognition. The extensive ecological range and behavioral adaptability of Neanderthals imply that they also modified their sexual and reproductive behavior in response to environmental factors. Neanderthal sex lives revealed by ancient bone in surprising ways. A cave that has been inhabited for centuries can be found in the Altai Mountains in southern Siberia. Its name is Denisova, and it is home to some extraordinary remains, several kinds of prehistoric human ancestors' bones. When scientists examined a preserved pinky finger bone recovered in the cave in 2010, they identified a completely new branch of the human family tree. They were known as the Denisovans, a group of extinct hominins who had a genetic makeup distinct from either Neanderthals or contemporary humans at the time they inhabited the world. Following that finding, scientists continued sorting through the hundreds of bone fragments in the cave, many of which were from animals, until they came across one that appeared to be from a possible human ancestor. It turned out to belong to a young woman named Denisova Eleven, who lived 90,000 years ago. Now that her DNA has been sequenced, researchers have discovered something extremely unexpected. She was descended from a Denisovan father and a Neanderthal mother. It appears that our forefathers weren't too picky about a fling. The 50,000-year-old toe bone demonstrates that Neanderthals were not only inbreeding with various species, notably the enigmatic Denisovans, but also highly inbred. We still know very little about the real sexual lives of Neanderthals, despite a wealth of genetic evidence that has solved many of the puzzles left by their departure. We are aware that they interacted with people, but we are unsure of the circumstances or the precise frequency of those interactions. Although we are unsure of the act's exact appearance, we can conclude that it was probably somewhat akin to contemporary human sex. Perhaps as time goes on, we shall learn more about the Neanderthals' way of life. This ends our history talk for today. What are your thoughts on it? Share with us. Also, 
Like, share, and subscribe to the channel to gain more knowledge about sex throughout history.